Hello, fellow aviation peeps enthusiasts. I haven't come up with a better name for you guys yet, but I gotta, I, I, I gotta think about that and work on it. Um, I've had some people ask, you know, they've seen this gold uh, pin that I wear around somewhat frequently. Um, it's my 100-hour volunteer pin for Coatesville Disabled American Veterans Hospital, medical hospital. I, I, I lost in the great economic chaos of 07, 08, and 09. I lost my career at Verizon, and uh, I owe those bankers that raped our country of all that money and then snuck out the back door. I owe them. I owe them a, a kick in the nuts, and nothing would give me more pleasure than to do that. But I lost my career there, and uh, at the time I was 59 years old, and. Um, had to look for more work, but it took me a long time. It took me over a year on unemployment. I did some odd jobs here and there, but while I was while I was out of work, I decided, you know, hey, um, you know, I, I knew they needed some drivers out there, and it's Coachville Medical Center, Veterans Medical Hospital, is the oldest one in the country, I believe. That's what I've heard anyway. Um, that's what I've been told. I haven't done any research to verify that or not so i wanted to talk about an accident i'm going to do another video on this accident but i just wanted to say a few things that, that, that are fresh in my mind and um this was the piper sport airplane and i believe yeah it was in southern california the accident was in southern california because they're close to lax and uh, I forgot the name of the airport, but it's an um, airport that's close to LAX, and they're doing training flights out of there, a very busy area. You got you to gotta see this. You, you really have to see this airplane and, and get this story firmly rooted in your mind and in your head because it's important if you're flying. Yeah, it's so important what caused this accident. And, and it just happened uh, like a few days ago, I believe. Um, so instructor, it was a short training flight. Uh, sounds like maybe his primary training. And um, uh, uh, so the the so instructor in the right seat, student in the left seat. They go up, they do some stalls, slow flight, and it was only 30 minutes, I think. And they come back. This is this is insane. This is really crazy. They come back. And they go, they're on final approach. And this is a very small airplane too, right? They're on final approach. And the student apparently gave it too much gas, right? But I would think if you have the nose down, that, that wouldn't cause what happened. But it, she gave it so much gas that the propeller torqued the airplane upside down and down straight into the ground to the left of the runway. So it, it, lo it looks like, so if the air pro if the propeller is from looking at, at it from behind is turning clockwise from in front, it would be turning counterclockwise, but you're in the cockpit and you're seeing your L plate uh, your, your propeller and it's turning clockwise. So it creates more pull on the down, swing and if you've had any experience with you know small prop airplanes you know that the that pull to the left can be pretty drastic if, if you just you know you just hit the gas or if you do a power stall you're gonna you're gonna you could flip upside down uh, the right wing can come right up on top and the nose would be pointed down and you can go into a spin which most planes you can recover from a spin they didn't have any room to recover I mean, I'm going to guess that they were maybe 100 to, to 200 feet above the ground. Oh, God, there's so many bugs out here, man. Whew. Is summer over yet? I don't think it is. Um, oh, sorry. Anyway, so the student, a girl, uh, hits, gives the thing gas. She might, have, she might have just pushed the throttle all the way in if it's a, if it's a typical throttle. Uh, that I know, that I use in a Cessna, it's it, all the way out is off, all the way in is juiced. Uh, she pushed it because the 
the instructor said, let go, let go. And he probably had his hand on the throttle trying to get her hand off the throttle, but it was too late. She, she turned the airplane upside down. And again, I don't have any conclusive or uh, hard evidence to that effect, but um, it was watched from the control tower. The guy in the control tower saw it all. And then when it happened, somebody radioed the control tower and says, should we get medical out there? And he goes, and he, and he saw the accident. And he says, nobody survived this one, but yeah, you can send medical out there. But it's not urgent because anybody that's in that airplane that crashed like that is not going to make it, right? So what, it still shouldn't have happened, in my opinion. <laughs> when I say, I say, I'm going to stop saying my opinion. I'm just going to say it still should have happened. And you can assume that, that everything that I say is my opinion. I could be wrong, but I've, <laughs> I've had a, uh, an excess of 500 in command hours pilot uh, in small airplanes and I tell you what you do those power stalls man that you can't believe that the airplane what the airplane will do you just you're just glad it didn't fall apart um, so there's a uh, a gear between the propeller and the crankshaft I've never heard of this before and what was the reason for that they didn't want the propeller turning as fast as the crankshaft I guess the designers of this airplane so the gear like if you're riding your bicycle and you go from third gear down to first gear, you know, first gear is low and the and it, and it spins. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense either, does it? But there's a gear between the propeller and the crankshaft. And if you juice the engine too hard, that propeller will turn a lot faster or more deliberately I, you know, I, I'm not sure about that because I thought in a lower gear it, it wouldn't turn as fast, but it would be easier for it to turn. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more because I don't understand exactly. Anybody that wants to throw some light on it, I'm going to put the report that I found on you uh, that I found on YouTube in the comments section of this video. Now, this report, I, I would tell, I would, I would advise, don't bother listening to the ATC. Uh, traffic, voice traffic between airplane and the tower because number one, you can barely understand it. It's very difficult to understand what they're saying. Um, and he gets to the bottom of it towards the end of the report. So I'm going to put the link in there. I'm going to go through that report again. And uh, there goes an airplane, a high wing trainer. And um, I'm going to go through the report again and make sure I understand. It was a gear down. I believe it was like to slow the propeller down. And if that's the case, then it didn't happen, like I'm saying. So I'll get back to you. And then if you have the time to look at the report, the link will be in the comments section. Have a great day. And um, have a blessed Sunday. It's Sunday. Oh, God, it's like 85 degrees here. And it's, what is today? September 18th? You think it'd be cooling off a little bit by now, but it's like 80, it's over 80 degrees here. We're in the northern half of the northern hemisphere here. So, good Lord. Didn't think it'd be this warm. Anyway, I hope you're all doing fine and uh, look forward to giving you some updates on this, giving you the, uh, one update on this. But look for the... Um, Look for the link to the report that I saw on YouTube, and that'll be in the comments section. You can click on that, but I wouldn't waste, like, it's a, it's, a, it's like 15 to 20 minutes long, I think. And most of it is list, trying to listen to AC, ATC traffic. It doesn't make any sense. But if you go towards the end of the report, of the video, you know, he'll, he'll point out to you where it crashed. And it, obviously, the, the plane jumped to the left and apparently stalled and turned over. <sighs> you can't. I, I can't imagine that. Because, you know, like doesn't make any sense. Anyway, God bless you.